Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very, very special guests tonight from the jumpiest film around, The Angel of Death. Please welcome Jeremy Irvine and Phoebe Fox. Welcome. Hello. Lovely to see you both. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Done your you. Christmas shopping? No. Uh, brilliant. No. Brilliant. Mm. Um, no, no one has. Um, let's talk about the fact that I just mentioned this is, this is for me, the jumpiest film I have ever seen. And I kind of watch movies for a living. Um, how aware of the scares were you when you were making this movie and how, how much this was going to push that, that scare factor? Um, I think it's a lot scarier than I thought it was going to be, actually. They've put, they've put in a lot of the jumps after we were filming it because they're CGI'd in. Um, but, uh, I mean, it was sometimes quite scary to actually to shoot it. So <laughs> uh, you're like, I found it scary, so surely everyone else will. I tried to make it as scary as possible for Phoebe. That's which true. Is, uh, it was abusive. Yeah. <laughs> so, so were you the nightmare for her? When she, so she's working on this big movie, and I know we'll talk about it a little bit later. You've worked with the director before, but are you kind of putting her off and making her go like boo whenever she's trying to work a scene? Yeah, as much as possible. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I think it's about being a supportive uh, co-star. Um, no, the director was actually worse. The director was the one that was hiding in cupboards on set, trying to... Calling rehearsals yeah. on camera so that he could hide and jump out at me so it could be on camera forever. So yeah. you record your because some people do that. Some directors like to record rehearsals to get to capture it, and then you find that the rehearsals make it into the movie. Did that happen? Is the rehearsal in the film? Um, I'm, I'm sure in some shots, not that one because it completely ruined the scene. Um, A lot of effing and blinding, so yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah. it was very yeah. sweary. And um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure sometimes the rehearsals. I haven't actually noticed in this film whether that's happened, but um, it does happen. You're right. Yeah. And what about for you? Did it, did, did anyone off? kind of put you off or were you the the main culprit of the let's not let them work very uh, well <laughs> well we also had um we had eight kids on set as well which was kind of uh the best fun for me in that i could show them one magic trick which went on the whole kind of <laughs> shoot and i was basically gandalf so uh no it was um i mean I'd, for me it was just a huge amount of fun doing this i mean working in london it was it's been a while since i'd done a film in the uk and yeah, and uh, i got to ride a motorbike um, what more do you want? Yeah, you're, ba you're basically Tom Cruise. <laughs> like, if I can get to ride a bike, I'll be in it. I've been telling people that for years. <laughs> yeah. <That's that. laughs> I mean, in terms of obviously you, you, you're kind of working away then. So, do you not get the chance to spend much time here in London anymore? Um, uh, not I, no, not very much. But but that's I guess a lot of films you know film all over the place. I mean, th this year I've been in Budapest and New Mexico and Montreal and you know they film all over the place. So you're you know you get to travel a lot. But in a way, that's kind of the best the best bit and then also I guess sometimes the worst bit as well depending on how homesick you get yeah um let's go back to the beginning because obviously the woman in black was as we mentioned it was a phenomenon it was the scariest film of 2012 and you know it was already a very very hugely successful book and uh, it's a theater production as well which is which has gone on for a very long time as well showed the popularity did you feel pressure when you knew that there was a sequel being written and then and the kind of the scripts come your way, you kind of go, look, you know, there's a lot riding on this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also felt the pressure of not being Daniel Radcliffe because everyone who, when I told my friends and family that I was going to be in it, they'd go like, oh, is Daniel Radcliffe in it? I'd be like, no, no. And they'd just be really disappointed. Did you not say to them, have you not seen the first one? Yes, I know. Yes, I was like, I don't want to give it away, but um, yeah. totally doesn't survive it. Like, I don't want to ruin it, but Brad, uh, Bruce Willis is dead in the sixth sense. It's time to let it go, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? These things need to be talked about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what about for you? Did you feel feel a pressure taking on, uh, you know, um, part two, if you like? Yeah, well, I, think, I think like Phoebe, I too was very disappointed that she wasn't Danny Radcliffe. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, no, it's, um, I mean, it was a huge success, but I think with anything like that where, you know, I've done, you know, when you do jobs which are based on a successful book or like something like that, you, you just don't think about it. You have to really put it out of your mind and, um, and just focus on the, the task in hand. It was a great script, and that's, I think, why everyone got involved, because it was this wonderful script. Yep. Um, we, spoke, we spoke earlier, we won't mention the movies that we were talking about, but, you know, scripts come your way, and some scripts aren't quite right. And, and some of those scripts that we talked about became huge movies. So what was it about this script that you went, you know what, I want this one, as opposed to 
uh, maybe even a bigger budget blockbuster movie that that a bit, a bit of summer blockbuster type thing. Um, I always find that question very difficult to answer. You know, to, to when you're when you read a script that I don't know, you just get this this feeling after you've finished it. You turn the last page with shivers going down your spine, or you. Um, you're, you're thinking about it for weeks afterwards. It's it's a very difficult thing to put your put your finger on, and it's not a specific genre. You know, when I read this script, I wasn't going, "Oh, I want to do a horror movie next." I read the script, and it was it was haunting in its own way. Um, in fact, one of the first things I did when I finished it was phone my agent and said, "Look, I think this movie stands up as a drama. You know, you could take all the horror out of it, and you'd still have a wonderful drama. Um, you've got all these characters with uh, such depth to their backstories and." Uh, set in such a wonderful period of history that just kind of sells itself to creative writing. And uh, yeah, I felt it, it stood up on its own and had a class to it, I guess, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of this movie as well, for me, it didn't feel like a sequel. It felt like a standalone movie. I know obviously it's 40 years after the events of, of, of the previous movie, but it kind of didn't have to be. It, it felt like a very much a standalone, like you say, drama but ultimately this jumpiest film I've ever seen. Was that, was, that quite, uh, uh, was that something that was aware to you? Did you kind of feel this is a standalone film for you? Um, I, I didn't really think that much ab about it at the time, but I, I, I totally agree. I think, it, I think probably what everyone was striving to do was to just to not emulate the first film because that would be boring. You know, let's, let's not... M Let's carry on with the, with the ghosts, but let's make something different. You know, it's a different people. It's got a very different feel to it. And it's it's it feels um, the the first film feels more like a sort of chamber piece, and it's it's incredibly atmospheric, and and and, and the second one is sort of freakier and scarier, and and it's got more heart to it as well. And but um, I, I'm I'm sure that probably Tom, the director, set out to make sure that it was a standalone as well, but I wasn't aware of it. Um, we're going to show a clip in a second, but first, before we do, I just want to talk about the children in the film. So you said there were eight kids in the movie, is that right? Is it eight I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <I think laughs> <so>. We <laughs> lost a couple that. on the way. At the start, there was ten. I was uh, going to say, no. to be fair, let's not give anything away, <laughs> but some of them ain't going to make it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fine. They're fine. They're all fine. They're all actors. Um, there is one particular, and I think you know the, the kid that I mean, and we're going to show a clip in just a second. What was it like working with him? He's, you know... He scared the life out of me. This is Oakley. Oakley. Pendergast. Yeah. Cocky Great name. little shit. He's nothing like out. that. <laughs> he was the kid that was always coming up to him and being like, Phoebe, you dropped your gullible card. He'd be like, what, yeah. where? Yeah, he was a lot of fun. <laughs> and he was fantastic. He was in The Impossible as well. He was fantastic in that as well. He's, He's going to be an incredible actor. It's amazing. Yeah. When, I think when you get real, you know, when children actors are good, it's so much more Depressing. Credible. Well, it's, oh. yeah, depressing. Yeah, yes, yes, depressing. But yeah, it's so much more credible than when a child. It's so natural, and he played this. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I mean, uh, he's honestly nothing like how he is in the film. He's yeah. a geezer. Thank he's a real goodness, because he's yeah. blooming scary yeah, in the movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you wouldn't want that kid <laughs> he's on set. Possessed, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at him in action. Well, don't worry, we'll have a little look at clips with you guys as well. But just to annoy you a little bit more, uh, here he is. This is a character called Edward. Uh, during a game of what's considered a very dodgy hide and seek. Take a look. Um, that's <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. We all jumped during that clip, and we knew what was coming. Um, so you, you mentioned earlier that some of this might be CG and, and some of the scares weren't necessarily there. How, what was that ratio between CG and actual? Because I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't have had a clue what was CG and I think that's probably uh, a good sign. Very little is, is, I was just thinking mainly of, there was a moment where I looked out the window and uh, they've CGI'd a, a bird flying into the window. That definitely wasn't there when I did that. Um, but what I think is great about it is you've got the, the woman in black played by Leanne Best that's just her. That's just her in makeup. And it's, it's scarier because I think, I don't know, I, you can always slightly tell when someone is CGI'd. And I think it's great that they've just got an actress and put her in six hours of makeup. And that's scarier, I think. What's your preparation for that, though? What is, is there a kind of preparation you guys do as actors to get into that? I've got to be scared. I mean, there's a clip that we'll show a little bit later on where you're walking through the woods. And obviously, I'm guessing there's not a lot in the woods and you've got to portray that, you know, we as an audience believe there's something out there. How, what's your process to get into that frame of mind? Is that a very difficult thing or is that something that you just kind of come naturally for you? Um, it sort of depended on the scene. I mean, some of them, it was easier because where we were filming was actually really scary. I mean, we filmed, we were talking about this earlier, we filmed in a place that was an old 
prison from the 1800s that's underground that was a prison for children. And it's on the most haunted walks in London. I mean, it's horrific. We filmed in there, the fear was real. That's the thing. So, I mean, we, w when we watch this movie, the house is a character. You know, that house is a very predominant character in, in, in the movie. How much of that house was, was real? How much was built? How much is, is kind of added on? And, and, and is that a set for you or is that a house? It's half. It's about half and a half, isn't it? Yeah. And there's, uh, you know, we filmed in Pinewood a lot of the interiors. Um, and we filmed some pretty grim houses, a couple of grim houses. Really but, uh, grim. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say that the fear thing is funny. I think fear is probably the most exhausting emotion to play. You know, you, you kind of you kind of know what you have to do to be very upset or very happy. But, you know, fear, how, how often really are we truly terrified? You know, probably only a handful of times in our life. And, you know, really drag About it 75 up during the or film. Yeah, or, or you'll watch this, yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it's exhausting, yeah. Um, in terms of that preparation as well, when you got the script, what was it that you kind of went, I'm going to do this movie, I want to go? Like, you know, you said you didn't purposely set out to make a horror next. So what was that process of, I is it character development for you or is it story? You know, what is that thing that makes you go, this is the film for me next? Um, for, for me, I, I liked the fact that it was uh, led by a woman and she is driven not by her love for a good man but by her own uh fears and demons and her past and and she also gets to kick some butt i mean as a as a as a young actress you kind of have to jump at those roles and and the script was really good it has to be a combination of those two things for me um i think i saw that i got to ride a motorbike um <laughs> Seeing a pattern uh, here, buddy. Yeah, yeah. No, I think um, uh, I think the character in itself has. I mean, I went, without giving too much away, we see I we see Harry, my character, as this very reassuring, um, charming influence throughout the film, and then we realise that all is not how it seems. So it's uh, you know the chance to play in any in any situation where you get to play a character who's hiding something, that's immediately more exciting. It's much more interesting to play someone who's lying about being something or pretending to be something they're not, because in the end, I think that's what we're all doing all the time. We're all pretending, or at least trying to front something that maybe that we want to be, that we want people to see us as. And uh, when you get to play a character that that's kind of all they're doing, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. You've seen my early work. Um, <laughs> let's talk about, you know, when you were saying about working with Oakley, um, obviously working with children is, is very difficult because uh, I'm guessing they can't be on set for as long as you guys do. So is yeah. there a point they go, right, they've got to go to school. Just pretend these kids are still there, right? Yeah, and then they use... Um, what well, they get the norovirus. Yes, or the they, or they the get what? very sick. Yeah. yeah, they, you know, kids, they get sick. They yeah. get sick a lot. So, so sometimes Disgusting Oakley Pendergast is just yeah. throwing up all yeah. day, and you yeah. just have to get somebody <laughs> else in. No, but you, they have they have stunt doubles. They have adult. I'm trying to think of them. They they have adult stunt doubles who are mm. child size. Okay. okay. Yeah, just imagine that. Yeah, that oh, that well, happened. I'm, I'm doing that right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's weird. Um, it's like walking around with hobbits. Going mm, wrong film. Oh um, my god, he said the H word. Uh, no, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gandalf. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so, I mean, in terms of in terms of this movie, how aware were you of the Woman in Black when this when this came to you? Were you aware of of the novel? Were you aware of the movie? Were you aware of the stage performances? W what was it about the Woman in Black that that brought it to your attention? Well, I saw it at school. I don't know about you. Yeah, me too. Jay. Yeah, I, I saw it at school. school, and I remember having to hold someone's hand the whole way through. <laughs> I was sixteen. It was a little bit sad. Um, so yeah, I'd seen it, and I had I knew about the first film. I, I and I watched it when um, I was in contention for this uh, part. <laughs> um, I say watched it. I watched it from behind my hand. Yeah, yeah. it's really scary. You and me both. Uh, let's take a little look at you in in action, Phoebe, if we can. Uh, this is your character, Eve, and this is the moment where she starts to walk around the grounds, and she kind of makes a discovery for the first time. Let's take a look. Muddy. <laughs> wow. Uh, is that, is that you that has to do that stunt? Or do you kind of go, I, I'm actually, done now, let, let someone else fall down that cliff? I was well up for it, man. I mean, it, it, some of it is, my stunt double actually did the, the sort of fall from the, the bit that I was running on down the cliff. And then they had me up three quarters of the way just holding myself. 
and then I just had to let myself drop down it. And each time we did it, I just got higher and higher because I, I just really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> She's not right. <laughs> I mean, do they, do they uh, you know, because obviously if you get hurt, that's the production gets hold and that's, you know, very difficult. I don't know what expensive. they were thinking. Yeah, well, they were like, look, let Phoebe do yeah, it. Yeah, just let her do it. <coughs> what Fuck about it. the motorbike? Because obviously you've mentioned a couple of times you're a fan of the bike. I'm, I think we're trying to get you a free one, maybe. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, did they yeah. let you ride the bike? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, idiots. Um, it was amazing actually. They were, they were looking for a, a, a you know a real genuine Second World War bike, and somebody found one all wrapped up in the back of a garage from the Second World War. So when I got my hands on it, it had nine miles on the clock, and it had the original tires and everything. And I soon put paid to that. So yeah. <laughs> so in theory, because you go, I mean, I, I don't want to give too much away, but you go from the house to the kind of the mainland, the mainland. Yeah. That's probably about three miles tops. I worked out in the film. You've probably done about nine miles. What was on the bike? Uh, I've a lot more than that. I mean, you know, what was I doing? Well, I wasn't hanging around in my trailer when there was a motorbike to play with. Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get to keep the bike? No, no, oh. no, 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 no. The boss is over there. We can have a word later. You must still have. I want a bike. an iBike. <coughs> Apple. <laughs> an iBike. Yeah. <laughs> um, you you mentioned to me that you saw the movie just a few days ago with your family. Yeah, yeah, I sat next to my little brother, which was uh, which was great actually. He's sitting next to little Toby, who's fifteen. No, he's sixteen now. And uh, yeah, I have the, I have the moment where I, I say I think I, you know, like in all movies where you, you you see the hero going, "Come on, guys, let's go and hide in the cellar," and you can't go, "No, what a stupid idea." So there is a movie where I, there's a moment where I come in and I say, "Look, there's a there's a raid on. Everyone, quick to the cellar." And Toby sat next to me, he's going, no, stupid, Jeremy, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it must be incredible, though, to be part of a film and to be able to show it to your family. And, and uh, is there yeah. ever anything that you've done and they've gone, oh, really? What were you thinking in that scene? Or, or you know, or I mean, obviously, they're very, very proud of you because you both have a, an incredible body of work now. But is there has there been one moment in a film they've got other than the stupid Jeremy moment? Um, I don't know. They... Uh I've put them through a lot recently. I mean, they've, I, the last movie they all saw with me was a uh, one where I get tortured and uh, called The Railway Man. So I think they were just happy that I wasn't being waterboarded in this. But I still, yeah. Well, I don't know, actually saying that. It was close to that in this. I was going um, <laughs> um, yeah. to say, uh, it's not like you have an easy ride in this one either. No, no. No, they're, they're all, they're, you know, my family are great. They've always been very supportive, no matter how bad the piece of amateur theatre or whatever it was that I was doing. They've always been good. So I saw one movie, I won't say which one, which actually I don't think came out here. But anyway, it was... And uh, my agent sat next to me, my agent Stephen, who's uh, this wonderful sort of Lon London agent. He goes, well, my darling, you won't be winning any awards for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, harsh, as bad as, that's as bad as it gets. I kind of want yeah. you to whisper <laughs> the movie now. I can't tell you what he just said, but it was really rude. Um... So, I mean, let's talk about um, the director. Cause, I mean, this is an incredible film, and, and the scare factor, as I've said many times, and I'll say it a thousand times to everyone again, it is just the jumpiest film, ho jumpiest horror film I have ever seen, and, and, and I watch them a lot. Um, working with Tom, the director, maybe she worked with him once before. Um, yeah. Was that, was that something, thank you, sir, was that something that, that made the relationship easier for you to kind of go from that movie? Because this was the, the, you know, you worked with him on the previous movie to this. Does that make that relationship and, and going straight into this a lot simpler? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And actually, I mean, he cast me in this film and, and then the, the other film I've done with him, War Book, was cast after that. Oh, yeah. So I think he cast me in War Book because he thought, Maybe it's a good idea for us to do something together that's a little bit, you know, not it's got much money riding on it. My part isn't as big. And we sort of sussed each other out first. Um, and yeah, it did mean that when we, because um, Woman in Black for both of us was at that time the biggest thing that we'd both done. So um, it meant that we could be really comfortable with each other and just be like, you know, Tom, you're being a, you're being a dick. And and you could be you know that open with with each other, <laughs> and that does help. <laughs> and and did that work with you and Spielberg, S Stephen? You're being a do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Maybe not. No, no, not so much. I remember once on War it. was <laughs> putting up my. I, I, You're not getting yeah. War of the Worlds too, mate. Oh jeez, I know. <laughs> I remember once very early on, sort of stopping the set and going, "I've had an idea," and the whole kind of cut, the crew just went. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he was great, actually. He was good at that sort of stuff, yeah. 
<laughs> and what about working with, with Tom on this? Because obviously you guys hadn't worked before. Mm. Was that, uh, did you just jump straight into that? Because obviously, the, you know, the relationship between a, an actor and a director is very important. And, and obviously you guys have got hit the ground running. I did yeah. have a lot of rehearsal time, kind of really just went straight into it. Yeah, well, I think the key is with, um, with any director is making the actor feel as comfortable as possible. And uh, Tom certainly did that. You know, when you're, you've ultimately got to go and do a lot of stuff that's probably going to feel very embarrassing, very awkward. Um, you're afraid, you know, you're playing make believe for a living. So you need someone who's going to make you feel as comfortable as possible when you're doing that. And that's when you do your best work. Yeah. And presumably having uh, a real set, real effects, as opposed to, uh, as Phoebe said, there's very little CGI in this movie. Does that make that acting a lot easier? Because the world seems to be now a world of CG. You know, you are acting against a tennis ball, uh, you know, whereas having the real person, you know, there was a woman in black. Does that make life a lot easier for you? I mean, I, I actually haven't done, uh, I haven't done a film where it had to act against green screen, so I can't really say, but I would imagine so. Yeah, hugely. I mean, yeah. it's, it's mad. I mean, when you do, I did a movie this year where I spent a month in a green hangar, and you know, and it's, it's, it's incredibly difficult. Like anything they can do where, you know, you're not having to, sp ex you know, expend so much energy imagining where you are and actually being in the place is, yeah, it's great. Um, we need to talk about um, the character um, of Harry. So he gets a little bit more action in this as well. I mean, we, yeah. we can't give away too much, obviously. But were you prepared for that? Because the character is very multi-layered in that way. You know, you did mention that we learn a little bit more about Harry throughout the film. Mm. Um, were you up for the action? <laughs> I'm always up for the action, Craig. Uh, no, it's... Um, I, uh, Get a room! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say there was... Uh, it was, I mean, you know, it's 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 wonderful when you ever get to do all this fun stuff with explosions and running around and jumping off things and riding and driving and all this sort of stuff. Then it's uh, yeah, it's a huge amount of fun. It's just playtime, really. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at you in playtime. Right. This is a this is a moment where um, Harry goes looking for Edward. Edward's done a bit of a runner basically, um, and there's uh, there's quite a lot going on. Take a look at this. This is uh, during a chase through the airfield. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you you know what's coming, you yeah. know <laughs> you know when you when you touch you know you touch his shoulder, you know he's going to turn around and it's going to make you jump anyway. Um, let me ask you a question. This is one thing that we talked about whenever we we talk about horror movies. Um, Christopher Lee, who's obviously uh, Homer uh, ha at Hammer, um, always said that something that's particularly scary to an audience on camera is usually the most laughable off camera. What was that one moment that you were filming? You go, hang on, we, we're never going to get this. This is hilarious. But on camera, it looked absolutely incredible. The, the only thing I can think of is, actually, it wasn't anything to do with us. It was that um, the sort of drumming monkey, which is horrible on screen. Yeah. But it drummed so hard, it kept falling off the ledge. And we were just pissing ourselves laughing. <laughs> just kept drumming and falling, and we had to put it back up again. What about for you? Was there, was there a particular moment in the film that you go like, like you've all got to calm down because I need to get this right? Um, oh, man, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I in, in that clip, for example, with uh, little Tom with his cut-up makeup and things, I mean, you do look at that in reality and you go, oh, right, that's a nice Halloween outfit, but not for a movie. And then, of course, you see it in, on screen, yeah. And it's completely different. Yeah. Um, we're going to open up questions to the audience, if you guys are happy for that. Sure. Slightly nervous. Uh, let's find out. Does anyone here have a question? Uh, we have a lady at the back. Just as the microphones go that way, we go, lady at the back. Um, can we get a microphone over there? Hey, um, well, as a working actress myself, I'd be interested in hearing how both of you kind of got your careers started and have made it to this very exciting point in your career so at such an early age. Jeez. Uh, a lot of luck, I think. Um, yeah. Well, we both went to drama school. Um, Briefly, yeah. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Phoebe went to RADA is what she's trying to no, say. No, I'm not <laughs> trying to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I mean, okay, it took me three years to get into drama school. So, I, I mean, the thing that I would tell any uh, actress, especially, is just persevere because... It's not really not easy. <laughs> and yep. if you give up at the first hurdle, then you just don't go into the business. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the third time I applied for drama school, I was, I was thinking, God, if I have to do a fourth year, I mean, I, but 
and it uh, apart from that i don't know what, what about well you? the same i mean you know i was it was two and a half three years before i got any work whatsoever after after leaving and um yeah perseverance but also i think the one bit of it, I, f I mean, I feel silly giving advice because I'm still so new to it, but uh, the one thing I would say is that nowadays cameras are so cheap, editing software is free from the internet. If you're, not ma if you're sat at home waiting for the phone to ring, it, uh, the, the, the days of that are over now. You know, you can be out making your own films. And that's how I got my first movie, Warhorse, was through making my own films, putting them into a sort of showreel, going around agents, and eventually that was shown to the casting director. So, yeah. I mean, when you when you got into to, to drama school after that that third year of trying, and now you're kind of in this huge movie, do you kind of want to send them a DVD and go, "Hey, look, see, should have got me earlier." I want to send one to Lambda because they would never see me pass the first audition. I really want to send them a DVD. That's where I went, and yeah, you went right. <laughs> <laughs> you went right for this establishment. <laughs> It's, it's amazing they've got chemistry on the yeah. movie, right? Yeah. I know, I know. They, <laughs> they clearly love each other. Um, and what about you? Do you just kind of go, uh, you know, just send the words, I'm working with Spielberg, deal with it, back to people that didn't give you those jobs that maybe you auditioned for before War Horse? Um, no, because, you know, it, it took me a long time. I, I'm, I'm still not convinced you can teach acting. I think it's something you have to figure out yourself. I think you'd be put in a situation where you can learn yourself. But I, th I think it took that long for me to figure out what it was i think yeah can i just ask you a really weird question did you ever practice your i'm scared face in the mirror before you when you got the job i wish i had daniel radcliffe yeah. told me that he did, did he, he said did? he practiced his scared face uh, when he did woman black and he <laughs> said that he ha he would sit in front of the mirror going <gasps> which is pretty much what he did through most of harry potter Man, oh, I Dad, Radcliffe, what? I what missed that? that lesson. But that's fantastic. I mean, I just what? wondered, you know, did you did you ever kind of go, no. I wonder what my scared face that's looks like? I should double freeze really frame of me and when we're on the bunker. Yeah. And then when I get started, and it, it's, it's awful. It looks like, uh, looks like I'm being electrocuted. It's horrible. Yeah. Mine's <laughs> very eyebrowy. One eyebrow up, one... I don't, I don't <laughs> like it. I wish I... I really wish I'd looked it's in a mirror. It's very Roger Moore. Very Roger Moore. Very Roger Moore. <laughs> yeah. Roger Moore. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see if we have some more questions. Uh, we have a gentleman again in the middle. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're picking people from the middle. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, I know you said the film's got a different tone to the first one, but does it have um, a gothic feel to it? Because I'm a Hammer Horror fan. I love the originals. So basically, does this have a gothic tone? Because in the original, it has a gothic tone when he's going to El Marsh. I was saying completely. I think this is very much a, a, a Hammer movie for, for the modern day, in a, in, yeah, in many ways. And it's, uh, you know, I think there's, there's a huge amount that, you know, there's a reason why the first movie is so successful. And I think uh, what... Tom was talking about the other day when we were doing Q&A was, you know, keeping all the bits that worked and then finding other things that to add to it. So it's not, it's not like we started from scratch, you know, yeah. Can I ask another question, if possible? Um, I know, you, have you seen the first one? I guess you have. Yeah. yeah. See it. Who do you prefer? Do you prefer Leanne Best or the incredible Liz White who played the woman in black in the first one? Good question. Wow, I that's, a, that's really a hard, hard question. That I'm not I, sure. Totally harsh to yeah. s to not say Leanne. Yeah. I I mean, Liz White was great, as but I I loved Leanne. She was supposed to be cast in this one before, but she couldn't do it because she had pride. So that's basically. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it was a hard thing I think for Leanne to step up and become the ghost because somebody had already done it, and yeah. I thought she did an amazing job. Uh, also, just going back to the the tone of of Hammer, this felt to me much more like the the Hammer films from, from Days Gone By more than the first movie Oh, really? Did. Uh, th that's the way I felt. And it was really interesting. This is the first uh, Hammer, I think, uh, sequel since like 73 or 74. So it shows you, in a way, how much people want this movie, you know, for, for a studio like Hammer to go, yeah, we will give this a sequel because it's kind of not something they've done for a long time. <coughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, everyone... Maybe even Hammer themselves were surprised at just how well the first film did, and yeah. it's, you yeah. know, it's like let's build on that. I mean, yeah. the it's you can go so many places with the character of uh, the woman in black and Neil Marsh House. I mean, it's let's just keep building on it. I think. Yeah, I never want to go there. Uh, <laughs> let's get a question. There was a lady over there that's had her hand up for a while. We'll pass the microphone along. Hi, um, I just wanted to know. Um, doing this kind of film is quite um, supernatural. So personally to you guys, do you guys believe in a supernatural? I always believe I'm going to be haunted. <laughs> um, 
it's actually a problem. Every hotel I stay in, the <laughs> first night, I'm like, this is it. This is the night that the ghost appears. I don't know why. I think someone told me once that I um, had the right aura to be a psychic. <sighs> they told me when I was like six, and it's really stuck with me, and I keep believing that ghosts are going to come find me. So, yes? <laughs> Jeremy? <laughs> Right. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, I feel like there's a therapy session that just needs yes, to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Straight well, after the Q&A. You know, my parents were, you know, um, no, I think uh, I kind of, I, I think no, in, in a word. Um, however, I have always been haunted by ghost stories. And I think the first movie was one that terrified me. You know, terrified me as one that would would be in my nightmares. When we were filming this movie, I was having woman in black nightmares and things. So I think maybe not in real life, but in terms of fiction, yes, yeah. Um, can I ask you? Do you have a favourite scary movie? Do you have a Do you have a favourite? Is the I one that you go back to? I think The Sixth Sense and the others are two movies which not only are scary but make me cry, and I think are just beautiful, beautiful films. Yeah. What's interesting about that, those two movies as well is they're very much character development movies. They're not. Yep. They're not a gore fest. They are exactly. They're and they're just the ones horror. I went back to when we were when we were working on this. Yeah. Very very similar tonally. Is there a particular movie for you, Phoebe? I agree with you definitely. I, I just saw the Babadook, which I thought was amazing mm. as well. The Babadook. Ba mm. that, even that kind of. Thank you. That's kind of a, you just walked around <laughs> going the Babadook. Babadook. Um, <laughs> you can now get the book as well, the pop up book. If you know the movie. Don't get the pop-up book. Don't do that I got to sent yourself. it. Oh. Yeah, they don't like do, me. Do they hate you? Yeah, yeah. Christmas gift. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, one Merry final Christmas. question we have time for. Let's get one question. Gentlemen oh, over yes. the back there. Hi. Uh, from the old generation of actors and actresses, I'm talking decades 1920s to 1970s, what is the one actor and the one actress that you really admire? Just <laughs> from the 1920s and... Between, 19, between 1920s and uh, 1970s. Between 1927 and 1970? No, no, between the 1920s and Bet 1970s. So these five decades. Wow. That's possible. Can I just say, that is the best question I have <laughs> ever <laughs> heard. <sighs> let, me, uh, let me throw that question. It's one that I was going to go with anyway. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it was my next. Between the 1920s... Seriously, I'm going with, it. I'm going with We've this, We've been doing Jeremy. a lot of interviews today, and that one we haven't been asked. Yeah, it's um, right. Between the 20s and the 70s, the 20s who is your favourite actor and actress? Good question. I'm keeping this for future Q&As. Uh, Kirk Douglas. Good one. Because you worked with his son recently, and that yep. keeps you in his good yeah. books. <laughs> Phoebe. Oh, um... Come on, chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I can't believe you don't think of one. Vivian Lee. Good, good answer. Thank you very much for the best question ever. I'm scared you have another question. <laughs> this is I'm terrifying. really scared you're still. Don't let him ask another this question. This is why, no, no, right, no, when please. we do these, Come on. we make people take the mics back. No, I, I okay. have to. I have to. Right. Okay, go, go on, please. I have to hear the next question. No, no, it's not. It's not uh, the next question. It's the fact that the guys have answered half the question because I asked for one actor and one act and one actress. So Jeremy oh. gave one actor. He hasn't given one actress. Oh, oh. oh. come on, Jeremy. <laughs> okay. Honestly. And, and the same for uh, Phoebe. Ah, don't say <laughs> come on. <laughs> Do you know? You know what? This Q and A should have ended about ten minutes ago. <laughs> I don't think any of us care. We're sticking around till we get this. Oh Wait. man, goodness. Oh, well, Phoebe, come my on. absolute favourite <laughs> from the twenties yeah. to the seventies would have to be Marlon Brando. Nice. Yeah. Jeremy, yeah. Uh, can I just say Vivian Lee as well? I yeah. mean, I'm a huge <laughs> fan. High five me for that. Thank you, man. Thanks, buddy. Don't high five him for oh, that. Oh, come on. Pers yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I just want to be involved. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fun. thank you. <laughs> Take the mic away. Take the mic away. Thank you. Uh, I want to hang out with you over Christmas, though, buddy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out. The movie is genuinely fantastic. You are going to love it. It's out on New Year's Day. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good festive film? Uh, yeah, the movie's out on New Year's Day. The Woman in Black, Angel of Death. You are going to love it. Please give a massive thank you to Jeremy Irvine and Phoebe Fox. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you so much.